Hi, I am Shane Allen, a Platform Solutions Architect for Rubrik. Today, I'm going to show you how you can use Rubrik and cascading archiving to reduce cost, decrease robo-site bandwidth consumption, and increase off-site data archive redundancy. I found myself spending more and more time managing my multiple remote site RPOs. And in some situations, requirements kept changing very often, eventually demanding more than one external copy of our backup data. I had to acquire more hardware, suffered through increasing management complexity, and lost a lot of time. Let me show you how I fix this once and for all. We'll cover how you can simplify your RoboSite's archival policies and the benefits of it through a real demonstration. Having a couple or even a dozen of locations to manage could get quite challenging. If you have long-term retention goals, it could even get worse. We are talking about different locations, eventual compliance needs, infrastructure resource specifics, not to just manage, but needing to actively monitor or go through reports, audits, capacity planning, hardware procurement, and so on. Not to mention situations where each site may be unique and would lead to more management concern and time invested. At Rubrik, we have customers with hundreds to thousands of remote locations today. Cascading archiving simply allows customers to archive replicated snapshots from the target cluster to a cheaper medium of storage, whether it be public or private cloud. It also allows for two offsite copies of the data. Customers can configure instant archival from the source cluster to maintain an additional copy of the data in addition to archiving from the target cluster. Reasons to use cascading archiving. One, reduce cost. You can move snapshots from the target Ruby cluster to a cheaper medium of storage, public or private cloud. This increases the scalability of the target cluster. Two, decrease bandwidth consumption on the source. You can choose to only configure replication from the source robo clusters and then archive these snapshots from the target cluster in the primary data center. And three, increase redundancy. Two offsite copies of data. You can configure instant archival on the source cluster to maintain an additional copy of the data, in addition to archiving from the target primary cluster. Let me show you how this is done in a quick demo. What you can see here is I have two Ruby clusters. The one on the left is the source cluster, the one on the right is the target cluster. We will look at a local SLA domain on the source cluster. This SLA domain replicates to the target cluster. If we take a look at the SLA domain, I see I do snapshots once a day for 30 days, once a month, keep those for 12 months, and once a year and keeping it for two years. Clicking on next, I've enabled replication to the target cluster, but set the replication for the full two years. From here, we'll go to the target cluster, click on SLA domains, remote domains. Choose the replicated SLA domain. With this button, edit archiving policy, this is where we can change the retention from the source SLA domain that was set at two years down to say seven days on the target cluster, but from the target cluster, archive out to AWS, and we've also enabled instant archiving here. So you can see with this policy, snapshots are stored on the target cluster for seven days, but at the same time, instantly copy to an AWS archive, and we store there for two years. This is cascading archiving. So how do we increase redundancy? Simple. Go back to the source cluster SLA domain. Click on Edit. Click on Next. Turn on Archiving from the source cluster. You can choose a different cloud provider. Enable Instant Archiving. Clicking Next here, you'll see, in summary, local retention for the snapshots from the source cluster will be 14 days. I will also instantly archive out to a different cloud provider and keep those snapshots for two years. At the same time, replicating to the target cluster with a retention set of two years. However, on the target cluster, I'm only storing them locally for seven days, 
and they're going out to a different cloud provider and staying there for two years. I hope I've been able to answer your questions about cascading archiving. We were able to demonstrate a source SLA for cascading archiving. We also demonstrated the archiving policy on the target cluster remote SLA to enable cascading archiving. And we reviewed how to increase redundancy from the source cluster SLA. Please revisit your remote locations and assess if you have an archival need that can benefit your company's TCO by considering cascading archiving. For more information about Rubric or cascading archiving, please visit rubric.com.